Hello students, welcome to the lecture on organizational culture. And after this lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain the basics of organizational culture, discuss the Shen's organizational culture model, explain the cross-cultural perspective, discuss the Hofstede model von Strompenaars. Let's start with a brief introduction to organizational culture. The concept of culture has become increasingly significant in education during the 1990s and into the 21st century. This enhanced interest may be understood as an example of dissatisfaction with the limitations of those leadership and management models which stress the structural and technical aspects of schools and colleges. The focus on the intangible world of values and attitudes is a useful counter to these bureaucratic assumptions and helps to produce a more balanced portrait of educational institutions. Culture relates to the informal aspects of organizations rather than the official elements. They focus on the values, beliefs and norms of individuals in the organization and how these individuals' perceptions coalesce into shared meanings. The developing importance of culture arises partly from a wish to understand and operate more effectively within. This informal domain of the values and beliefs of teachers supports staff and other stakeholders. Both stress the increasing significance of cultural factors in leadership and management. Let us now discuss the basics of organizational culture. Organizational culture is a concept developed by researchers to explain the values, psychology, attitudes, beliefs and experiences of an organization. Generally speaking, it is viewed as the shared norms and values of individuals and groups within an organization. This set of mutual understandings controls the way individuals interact with each other within the organization as well as with customers, suppliers and other stakeholders existing outside the boundaries of the organization. Organizational culture has been studied by researchers from diverse fields, purely academic fields such as sociology and anthropology, as well as applied disciplines such as management science and organizational behavior have offered their perspectives on what it is. Although it might not be possible for one definition to suit all fields, there is general agreement among researchers on various aspects of this type of culture. Organizational culture is both formal and informal. A flowchart indicating authority lines or a human resources manual might define the formal culture. Informal culture, though, is revealed in such things as bulletin board contents, decorations in individual work areas, the arrangement of furniture, newsletters, clothing worn, how employees interact in meetings or collaborate, and the workplace stories that are repeated. The hiring of new employees is another area in which the culture of the organization plays a role. In the interviewing process, Questions often are directed to explore whether or not the candidate would be a good fit in the organization's culture. It is a powerful element that shapes all facets of work. The types of organizational culture are Collegiate There is a dual structure of administration and academic management, which results in parallel committee structures which can act as a black hole for decision making. Unclear reporting lines and poor coordination, strong local cultures, agendas and identifiers. Academic status is perceived as higher than support or administrative functions. There are strong subject specific allegiances which academics often feeling a stronger alliance to their subject area and external networks than the institutional mission. Bureaucratic. Characterized by strong central management and top-down decision making, the hierarchy of control and decision making is clearly established in the administrative and management structures of the institutions. Management roles are clearly defined as career progressions, heads of department, deans, etc. are appointed through an interview process to tenured positions. Central management has strong control over the direction of the strategic priorities for the institution. Functions of organizational culture. Organizational culture is the personality of an organization, the way things are done. It is defined as the informal values, norms and beliefs that control how individuals and groups interact internally and externally. External adaptation, organizational culture and leadership. The first is mission. In a strong culture, groups are committed to the company's mission and strategy to deal 
with the competitive environment and other external forces. The second and the third elements are goals and means. Goals are derived from the mission but are more specific. For example, a company's mission could be to gain market share, but the goal would include specific percentages and schedules. The third element is the means to achieve the goals, including labor, specialization, compensation systems and organizational structure. Internal integration. Organization culture also plays an important role in internal integration. The first is common language. To communicate effectively, group members developed a common set of actions and words. The second element is group boundaries. There should be consensus on who is or is not a member. Leadership may formally set these boundaries but the group gratifies them. Importance of culture to the organization. A common platform where individuals work in unison to earn pro profits as well as livelihood for themselves is called an organization. The culture of the workplace controls the way employees behave amongst themselves as well as with people outside the organization. The culture decides the way employees interact at their workplace. A healthy culture encourages the employees to stay motivated and loyal towards the management. The culture of the workplace also goes a long way in promoting healthy competition at the workplace. Employees try their level best to perform better than their fellow workers and earn recognition and appreciation of the superiors. It is the culture of the workplace which actually motivates the employees to perform. The organization culture brings all the employees on a common platform. The employees must be treated equally and no one should feel neglected or left out at the workplace. It is essential for the employees to adjust well in the organization culture for them to deliver the level best. The work culture unites the employees who are otherwise from different backgrounds, families and have varied attitudes and mentalities. Now moving on to the next topic, we will study Skeen's organizational culture model. Edgar Skeen proposed a model of organizational culture where the basic assumptions shaped values and the values shape practices and behavior, which is the visible part of culture. Organizations do not adopt a culture in a single day and in fact learn from past experiences and start practicing it every day, thus for forming the culture of the workplace. Skeen believed that there are three levels in an organizational culture. Artifacts. These mark the surface of the culture in every organization. The visible part of the culture can be noticed by a visitor or an outsider in the form of the following aspects. Physical artifacts. Physical artifacts can be found through the architecture and interior arrangements, physical space, its allocation and office design, decoration, manner of dressing, and even mementos and trophies awarded on chosen occasions. Language gives away culture through modes of speaking, levels and types of sound, slogans, special expressions. Stories and myths circulating among the staff indicate what type of person or acts are considered heroic, how certain types of situations should be handled, what should not be done, what happens in this organization if one acts in a particular way, and so on. Values. When compared to the basic assumptions, values are at higher levels of consciousness and they reflect the members' shared opinion on how things should be. When we say opinion, it means that when it comes to acting, these members may or may not act as per their values. The values help the organizational members classify situations and actions as, as either desirable or undesirable. Assumptions An assumption is a kind of belief that is taken for granted as a fact and so it is never challenged. Skyne gave four types of assumptions that form the paradigm for every organization. Assumptions about what is the truth in physical and social matters, how reality and truth are det determined and whether the truth is to be revealed or discovered. Assumptions about the importance of time in a group, how time are to be defined and measured. Basic assumptions about the intrinsic or ultimate aspects of human nature, whether the human nature is fundamentally good or bad and whether it can be perfected. Assumptions about the organization's relationship with its environment, about the understanding of work and play and how much of activity and passivity should be appropriate. Skynes model. Skynes model defines organizational culture as the deepest and strongest aspect of organization life. The culture has three cognitive levels which one can measure. Problems with Skynes model. First problem, 
it is not really clear what is the difference between the professed culture and the tacit assumptions. It is hard to define when some kind of professed culture becomes a tacit assumption. The second problem. The second problem is the term of organization attributes is too vague and general. Let's know the meaning of cross-cultural perspective. Cross-cultural business communication is used in reference to the manner in which business communications occur across cultural borders. Cross-cultural business communication is something that is totally the consequence of a globalization and the effect of increasing integration and interactions across cultural borders that have become commonplace as a result. These interactions may be business oriented or geared towards other personal objectives but both require the same types of considerations in terms of an acknowledgement of differences in perspective caused by the inevitable variances inherent in the various cultures. Some of the considerations in cross-cultural business communications include concerns about the differences that are caused by culture, beliefs, law and language. One of the factors in cross-cultural business communication is the fact that the differences in cultures usually have a direct effect on the manner in which business affairs are carried out by the members of such a community. For example, cultures that do not allow women to have certain rights will also reflect this bias in the business aspect of the dealings, something that businessmen and women from other less repressive cultures would have to understand in order for them to communicate effectively. Another consideration in cross-cultural business communication is the manner in which the law of the foreign culture affects the manner in which they conduct their business. This is very important because most times miscommunications may occur due to the assumption by one party to a business communication that the law in his or her country is also the same in the country of the foreign business partner. One way to avoid this miscommunication is through a conscious effort by a business to study the law and customs in the country before it ventures into that country. Language is also a concern in cross-cultural business communication. Due to the fact that the language barrier must be surmounted in order for business communication to occur, When discussing the business differences between Hong Kong and the United States, there are two schools of thought. First, that managerial values will converge from Chinese and Western into Western-style cultural values driven by industrialization. And second, that cultural forces will be enough to make sure that business cultural values remain distinct and different between Hong Kong and the United States. The researchers Ralston, Gustafson, Cheung, and Terpstra conducted a study of U.S., Hong Kong, and Chinese managerial attitudes and practices. They used measures from the West including Machiavellianism, locus of control, intolerance of ambiguity, and dogmatism. They also surveyed managers using measures developed in the East, including Confucian dynamism, human-heartedness, integration, and moral discipline. They found that both business and culture impact managerial values and keep them distinct in each country. Now we know that managerial values aren't the exact same as culture, but they're close enough to be used as a proxy for culture. Culture is really shared values. It's useful to think about culture in terms of people, organization, and systems. The degree to which each of these cultural differences conforms to archetypes and norms will be greatest across systems slightly less as you start seeing variation between organizations and even less as you look at individuals. Specific cultural differences between Hong Kong and the United States business culture include 
First, power distance. Power distance is an issue cited by many. The willingness to challenge a supervisor varies highly between Asian and North American cultures. Asians often cite Americans as not respectful enough to their superiors, and Americans often fault those from high power distance cultures as letting position and fear stand in the way of operational effectiveness, or even, as referred to by Malcolm Gladwell in Outliers, the safety of human life. Ethics. There's a difference between extrinsic and intrinsic contracts and the way Hong Kong business people and United States business people view the value of the two of those relative to each other. Hong Kong business people are said to value extrinsic or expressed contracts highly, while weighting intrinsic contracts more lightly. The opposite is said to be true in US business culture. Intrinsic agreements are weighted heavily while extrinsically agreed upon contracts, while legally valid, are not ascribed the importance they would be by Hong Kong business people. Another difference is individual versus group orientation. The United States is rated on Hofstede's scale as the highly individualistic culture, while results from the same assessment in China reveal a group orientation. Hong Kong, while maintaining a Western-style capitalist system, displays this group orientation in the business context. In an August 2007 by Burton, Farr, and Hagerty of about 300 Hong Kong and U.S. business students' attitudes toward corporate social responsibility, Hong Kong students were found to value economic responsibility more while U.S. students perceived social responsibility with more weight. That's an interesting but telltale sign of the strong influence of free market capitalism on Hong Kong. Another difference is the role of Feng Shui in Hong Kong business decisions. Other cultural cues like colors, which may hold subconscious significance in the United States, are overt symbols in Hong Kong. White, for example, is the color most closely associated with death. Hong Kong is different from other Asian countries in terms of the Hofstede score for uncertainty avoidance. Scoring at 26, compared with an average of 63 for other Asian countries, Hong Kong business people showed a penchant for risk. That explains the popularity of horse racing and betting in places like Happy Valley. Hong Kong's favorite race course. Capitalist systems influence American business culture, communist systems influence Chinese business culture, and Hong Kong exists in a limbo stage between the two, with the cultural values of the East, but a strong tradition of free market capitalism inherited from British stewards of the city-state. Hofstede model for entrepreneurs. Gert Hofstede and von Strompenars are Dutch academics who have spent considerable time over the past 30 years thinking about cultural diversity and its effect on business. While each is critical of the other's work, both men have come up with a series of cultural dimensions that they use to consider how national culture affects organizational behavior. These dimensions are particularly helpful to communicators with the global employee audience. By analyzing where audience fits in these dimensions, we can better structure communication so that they elicit the response one desire. There is no doubt about these cultural analysis can seem confusing at first, but it is the role of a competent and expert translation and localization provider to put it in context. Well, most management books have been written by Americans, U.S. nationals, and because of that uh, fact, we have the misconception that we are the only ones who understand how business is done. So when we send someone to France, to wherever in the world, we bring with us this attitude that we are here to teach you how it's done. But the culture does not embrace those cultural standards that we have in the US um, that need to mix business and pleasure is practically universal. The only place on earth where I have not experienced it is in the United States. So there is this disconnect. Um, you will see a US national going to Latin America and he will refuse to go to dinner at the president's house, uh, president of the company's house, and because he feels that you know it's uncomfortable, it's just too close for comfort. And the Brazilian on the other side is feeling that this is an insult. And so the trust cannot be built. And so, and people don't realize they, they, because they don't know. And so they feel that in their culture, they're doing the right thing. And the Brazilian are feeling that this person is absolutely not the right partner 
for the transaction and they keep on looking. So trust is truly the, 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 the core. Trump announced four types of corporate culture. Trump, culture. Trumpenhaus developed a cultural diversity model for application in business by considering the effect of national cultures on the notions of person task and centralized versus decentralized organization structures. The four types of corporate culture are guided missile, a guided, a project oriented approach concerned with results. This group looks for practical solutions to shared challenges via multidisciplinary teams. The UK and US fit into this group. Eiffel Tower, a role-oriented group in which hierarchy is important, top-down management style to manage change, the business would have to change rules and procedures. France and Germany score high in this model. Familial, this is a power-oriented model in which a family approach is taken. Power comes from high but is well known and there is a deep concern for all members. Japan and Belgium fit into this model. Incubator. Fulfillment-oriented group who see all members as co-creators, a relatively egalitarian structure in which individuals are given the freedom to improvise. Silicon Valley is a good example of where this has worked to great effect. Hofstede's five cultural dimensions. Hofstede's identified five different dimensions of natural culture. Each national culture can be situated somewhere along the axis of each dimension. The five dimensions he identified are power distance. The extent to which less powerful members of that culture accept that power is distributed unequally, that is the distance between those who have power and those who do not. This dimension reflects inequality, accepted from below, not imposed from above. Power distance is high in Latin, Asia and African countries and low in Germanic, Scandinavian and Anglo-Saxon countries. Individualism, Collectivism The extent to which individuals are integrated into groups or not. Individualism prevails in Western and other developed countries and collectivism is common in Eastern and less developed countries. Japan takes a middle position in this dimension, masculinity, femininity. This refers not so much to gender roles as to the degree of emphasis in a culture on success, achievement and assertiveness or caring, modesty and inclusiveness. The former is held to reflect male values while the latter is held to reflect female values. Masculinity is high in Japan, Germanic countries and moderately so in Anglo-Saxon countries. It is low in Scandinavia and the Netherlands and moderately low in some Latin and Asian countries like France, Spain and Thailand. Uncertainty avoidance. A society's tolerance for uncertainty and ambiguity. Uncertainty avoiding cultures minimize the possibility of novel or unstructured situations through strict laws and rules, safety and security measures and a philosophical religious commitment to the concept of absolute truth. They are motivated by inner nervous energy and are more emotional. Uncertainty accepting cultures are more tolerant of different opinions, reflective and pragmatic. Latin and Germanic countries and Japan are high in uncertainty avoidance. Chinese, Scandinavian and Anglo-Saxon countries are more uncertainty accepting, long-term or short-term orientations. This deals with the issue of virtue. Long-term cultures value thrift and perseverance. Short-term cultures value tradition. The fulfillment of social obligations and protecting one's faith or honor. A long-term orientation is associated with the East Asian countries and Hofstede notes that their recent economic success has been built on this. Charles Hampton, Turner and Fons Trompenaurs. These researchers take a similar approach to Hofstede, locating national cultures along two different axes. Some of these are similar to Hofstede's categories, others are different. Universalism, particularism. Universalist cultures emphasizes rules, laws and generalizations. Particularism cultures considers the exceptions, special circumstances and obligation created by relationships. The classic expression of this axis is to ask what we would do if we were in a car being driven by a friend who hits a pedestrian. Individualism and Communitarianism. This category is similar to that of Hofstede with a respective emphasis on self-achievement or the achievement of goals and objectives within the community framework. Now, in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. The managers and executives within an organization have a significant impact on the culture because of their role in making decisions, but they are not the only members of the work community. 
Culture is manifested by symbols and rituals rather than through the formal structure of the organization. Beliefs, values and ideology are at the heart of organizations. It is important to recognize that culture is learned and helps people in the effort to interact and communicate with others in the society. Cross-cultural business communication is used in reference to the manner in which business communications occur across cultural borders. Edgar Schein proposed a model of organizational culture where the basic assumptions shape values and the values shape practices and behavior which is the visible part of culture.